Hello. Hope you are enjoying my lectures on economics, especially on macroeconomics. Today, I am going to introduce the MEC and MEI. That is the marginal efficiency of capital and marginal efficiency of investment. There are number of questions in different type of competitive examinations, especially in the national level examination, such as Indian Administrative Services, in IAS examination, in NET examination, conducted by the UGC and also there are some questions in BA honors or BSc, BSc honors in economics. So this topic is very important and you should have a clear idea over this concept that is the marginal efficiency of capital and marginal efficiency of investment. So, there is a common understanding that if we invest our money in some stocks in a share market, then we think that it is an investment. But in real sense, it is not investment. It is a transformation of capital asset. And it is, it is a financial investment. But in real sense of in investment, it is different matter. Before we have a understanding over the MEC and MEI, we should have a clear idea on capital and investment. What is capital and what is investment? So capital, capital is nothing but a stock. Suppose you have a computer for the production purpose, then this computer is a capital. And if you have a photocopy machine, then it is a capital. So like factories, plants, equipment, and inventories of finished goods or semi-finished goods are called the capital. Okay. So there is an equation. If you have a look, if you have a look in this equation, then you find that the capital stock by the end of a year, of a particular year, it is a required capital stock that is required to produce the expected output in the expected output of the coming year. Okay, this is the capital stock. So now there is another concept, what is investment? So investment is nothing but change in capital stock. Suppose there is a capital stock at period T, that is K, K star T, and there is a capital stock at period T minus one, then the gap, the difference is the investment. Then the gap is the investment. So investment is a, is a change, is a change of capital stock. And you should remember that capital is a stock concept. Capital is a stock concept, but investment is a flow concept because it changes over time, because it changes over time. Now, in investment, 
there are autonomous investment and induced investment so what is induced investment at first we are going to spread some light on the induced investment induced investment is a investment is an investment which is a function of income if there is increase in income then there is increase in investment then that investment is called the induced investment if you draw a picture a diagram like this this is the induced investment this induced investment here we measure the investment and measure the income so if income increases if income increases investment also increases and this is the point where investment is zero this is the point where investment is zero so investment induced investment is a function of is a function of income now there is autonomous investment before going to autonomous investment there are another two concept that is the efforts propensity to invest and marginal propensity to invest efforts propensity to invest is investment by income this is efforts propensity to invest okay total income and total investment the ratio between the two is called the efforts propensity to invest it's called the efforts propensity to invest now what is the marginal propensity to invest it is a concept of induced investment so marginal propensity to invest is a change in investment and change they'll represent the change change in investment and change in income it is a ratio between the change in investment and change in income so this is the this is the marginal propensity to invest okay now the autonomous investment autonomous investment is not a is not a function of income it is autonomous it is independent suppose there is some some railway constructions there are some road constructions so autonomous investment is independent of the level of income and is thus income inelastic it is income inelastic on the contrary induced investment is inter is income elastic okay it is influenced by the exogenous factors autonomous investment is influenced by exogenous factors like innovations inventions growth population labor forces weather changes were etc different factors may be there but it is not influenced by the changes in demand rather it influences the demand rather it influences the demand so investment in when there is an increase in autonomous investment income generates and this income increases the investment that investment called the induced investment that investment is called the induced investment so this is the autonomous investment and induced investment now i am it is in all this marking Okay. Now, now look. This is the autonomous investment curve. Here, it is the autonomous investment curve. Look, along the vertical axis, we measure the investment. Along the horizontal axis, we measure the income. And this is the investment, autonomous investment. This investment is income in elastic. it does not depend on income it does not depend on income and i2 i2 
it is it is it is investment but there is increase in autonomous investment here the autonomous investment is low but here is autonomous investment is high okay so now now look determinants of investment in reality there are three factors that are taken into consideration while making any investment decision okay there are three factors what are those factors the first one is the cost of capital assets cost of capital assets determine the investment decision the expected rate of return from it during its lifetime is also a factor for investment decision and the market rate of interest is also a factor so keynes sums up these factors in his concept of mec keynes sums up the concept the factors such as the cost of capital asset the expected rate of return from it during its lifetime and the market rate of interest in his concept of mec the marginal efficiency of capital now now the mec what is mec what is marginal efficiency of capital you should have a clear idea over it the marginal efficiency of capital is the highest rate of return expected from an additional unit of capital asset over its cost what does it mean it means that marginal efficiency of capital is a return is a return that is expected from an additional unit of capital asset if there is a there is an increase one unit increase in capital asset then the highest rate of return which is expected for it is, is the marginal efficiency of capital now there is an example if the supply price of a new capital asset a new capital asset is dollar 1000 okay is dollar 1000 and his life is 2 years you have a capital asset whose supply price is supply price is dollar 1000 and it it life is 2 years it will continue for 2 years it is expected to yield dollar 550 it is it is expected from that capital that you can get dollar 550 from the first year in the first year and dollar 605 in the second year in the first year you are getting you you will get dollar 550 and in the second year you will get dollar 605 okay and here is information that the rate of discount is 10% rate of discount is 10% what is rate of discount you have an idea over it because it is a it is a reverse of the of the compound rate it is a reverse of the compound rate okay so rate of discount is 10% which equates the supply price to the expected yields of the capital asset so look this is the supply price of the capital asset dollar 1000 and this is the dollar 550 which you expect in the first year and this is the and this is the dollar 605 which you will expect at the second year so the present value of of dollar 550 because you will get it after one year so what is the present value present value is this present value is this 550 by 1.10 because there is a 10% 10% 10% increase 
the uh, rate of discount is 10 percent so 1 plus 10 equal to when 1 plus 10 percent is equal to 1.10 and now if there is a you will get six zero five dollar in the second year then the present value of that uh, amount is this the six zero five by one plus ten percent whole to the per square it is a formula for getting present value that's the opposite of the compound compound uh, interest rate compound interest rate so it is the it is the present value present value what you have what you will get after two years so by simply simplifying this we get 500 and by simplifying this we get 500 and adding 500 plus 500 and adding 500 and 500 we will get 1000 so if we generalize this if we generalize this then we get this then we get this this is a formula it is the it is the expected return in the first year this is the expected return in the second year and it is the expected return in the eighth year if the capital exists for the nth year okay and one plus i one plus i the whole the whole square plus one plus i to the power n this is the formula for getting the uh, getting getting the present value for getting the present value so present value the here i this i is called the marginal efficiency of capital m e c m e c this i is the marginal efficiency of capital okay this marginal efficiency capital is a factor which equalizes supply price with the present value of the capital with the present value of the capital it is an important factor here on the basis of which the supply price is equal with the with the present value of the capital stock so present value is the value now of payments to be received in the future now of payments received to be now of payments to be received in the future now suppose we expect to receive dollar 100 we ex expect to receive dollar 100 dollar 100 okay dollar 100 from a machine in a years in a year's time there is one okay there is one and the rate of interest is five percent rate of interest is five percent okay rate of interest is five percent then the present value of the machine would be dollar 100 100 dollar 100 by one plus five percent five percent okay so equal to 100 100 by 1.0 1.05 so by making a calculation we get 95.2524 so this is the this is the present value this is the present value that is the 95.24 this is the present value of dollar dollar 100 so if the rate of interest will increase then the present value will decline so there is a inverse relationship between the between the interest rate i the present value that is the this is this is a discounted 
the with the um, with the present hour. So, as a matter of fact, the MEC is the expected rate of return over cost of a new capital. So the MEC is the expected rate of return. It is the expected rate of return over the cost. Over the cost. Okay. So now it should be. You should remember one thing that if the five percent is seven percent and and it uh, it is increasing, suppose nine percent, then the present value will decline. So I have said that it there is an inverse relationship. Okay. So I am now I am erasing my, all this marking. Okay, now now before now if look look if the present value. Is greater than the supply price. Look at the previous. So if the present value this is the whole part, the present value is greater than the supply price, then it is then it is a profitable, and people will like to invest, and they will go to the bank and borrow money. So if the present value at it at least is equal with the supply price or the present value should be greater than the supply price otherwise there will be no investment otherwise there will be no investment so in another way we can say that in order to find out whether it is worthwhile purchase capital good it is essential to compare the present value of the capital asset with its supply price if the marginal efficiency of capital asset higher than the market rate of interest at which it is borrowed it pays to purchase the capital asset it pays to purchase the capital asset so if the market rate of interest is less than the marginal efficiency of capital if the if the marginal efficiency of capital if marginal efficiency of capital is less than the market rate of interest then there is no investment okay on the contrary if marginal efficiency of capital marginal efficiency of capital is greater than rate of interest market rate of interest then there is a scope of investment so now look at this graph along the vertical axis we measure the mec or interest rate okay and along the horizontal axis we measure the capital stock suppose the mec is r1 suppose the mec is r1 then the capital stock is k1 then the capital stock is k1 now this suppose this is the market rate of interest okay so there is a gap there is a gap between the mec and market rate of interest there is a gap and then it is profitable to invest further so the people will will buy capital stock and the capital stock will increase and increase and it will it will be at k2 until there is an equalization between the marginal efficiency of capital and the market rate of interest so so the here a gap this is the initial capital stock and this is the new capital stock 
So there is a gap, there is a difference. There is a difference that is the K2 minus K1. So this is the investment. Okay, this is the investment. Investment is a change in capital stock. Okay, so investment is a change in capital stock. Now, if the rate of interest, this rate of interest actually determines the desired level of capital stock. That is the optimum capital stock. That is the that is a K2. That is a K2. There is a market rate of interest determines the desired capital stock. And MEC and MEC relates the desired capital stock with the with the market rate of interest. MEC relates the desired stock of capital with the market rate of interest. This is the role of MEC. And the market rate of interest determines the capital stock. Market rate of interest determines the capital stock. So if there is a less gap, the gap is less, that is the rate of interest is high, rate of interest is high, then the gap will be low and this that capital stock will be will be look here suppose so if there is an increase in market rate of interest then then the change in capital stock is slow it means change in capital stock that is the investment investment will be low if there is an increase in rate of interest there is a there is a decrease in investment understand so here is a negative relationship between the market rate of interest and the and the investment and the investment so marginal if the marginal efficiency of capital is equal to the market rate of interest then there is no investment so there is no investment and as there is no investment, so we can say that the marginal efficiency of capital relates the desired stock of capital with the market rate of interest. So we can say that. Okay. And now the, look at this car, the MEC. This is the MEC car. This is the MEC car, marginal efficiency of capital stock. It represents a diminishing returns to scale. As the stock increases, increases its marginal productivity will decline. So if there is an increase in the marginal efficiency of capital, then the, there is a decrease in the capital stock. So there is a negative. So there is a negative relationship. Okay. So there is a negative relationship. Now, I am erasing all this marking. Otherwise, I will not be able to move further. Okay. So, I am erasing all this marking. Now, look at this. Now, before going to that, so so here is a concept of investment so here is a concept of investment and how the concept uh, how the concept of investment uh, 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 relates with the market rate of interest and what is the role of mec here and what is the role of marginal efficiency of capital so marginal efficiency of capital actually relates actually relates the desired stock of capital with the with the market rate of so we have investment. Now there is a concept is marginal efficiency of investment. Okay. The marginal efficiency of investment, another concept. The marginal efficiency of investment is 
like the marginal efficiency of capital. It is the expected rate of return from one additional unit of investment. It is also as same as the marginal efficiency of capital. So marginal efficiency of investment is, a, is an expected rate of return of one additional unit of investment. Okay. So now, look, the MEI, that is the marginal efficiency of investment is the rate of return expected from a given investment on a capital asset after covering all its costs, except the rate of interest. Like MEC, it is the rate which equates the supply price of the capital asset to its prospective yield. MEI, that is the marginal efficiency of investment, is nothing but a sheet unit. It is nothing but a combination of two points, which shows the amount of investment demanded at various rate of interest. At various rate of interest, how much investment is demanded? So MEI car, that is the marginal efficiency car, shows all those combinations, shows all those combinations of rate of interest and investment. Where the amount of investment and the market rate of investment, market rate of interest is equal okay so look at my picture here along the vertical axis we measure the mei or the interest rate and along the horizontal axis we measure the investment okay now look this is the investment this is the investment car, sorry, MEI car, MEI car. This point represents a combination of investment and rate of interest. This point represents a combination of investment and rate of interest. This point also, also represents the combination of rate of interest and investment. So this curve is nothing but a, not, not, uh, nothing but schedule of uh, investment and interest rate. Okay, so MEI is nothing but a schedule or combination of, of investment and interest rate. Hope you have a clear idea. So now look, there it is a downward slope curve because there is the inverse relationship. There is the inversion, inverse relationship between the investment and the rate of interest, market rate of interest. This is the market rate of interest, okay? If there is an increase in rate of interest, the investment will decline. We have seen it. In our previous diagram, we have seen it. Be on the basis of the marginal efficiency of capital, the difference between the marginal efficiency of capital and the market rate of interest actually determines the investment. So if there is an increase in rate of interest, the investment will decline. Okay, so there is a, there is a, there is a negative slope in the icon. Now, so you have, I hope you have, un, uh, have an understanding over the marginal efficiency of capital and marginal efficiency of investment. And what is the relation between the marginal efficiency of capital and what is the marginal efficiency of investment? Okay. Now, look, if the investment is not responsive, for example, if the investment is not responsive to the market rate of investment, market rate of interest, then the MEI curve will be a parallel curve, parallel line to the, to the vertical axis. If the investment is not responsive, is inelastic to the market rate of interest. But if it is more elastic, if it is elastic, if it is more responsive, if the investment is more responsive to the market rate of interest, then the curve will be flat like this.
So look at the difference between the two curves. Here the change in the interest rate, here the change in the interest rate and change in the investment and here the change in the interest rate and change in the investment. Okay. The change in the interest rate and change in the investment is high here. Change in the investment is high here. But the same change, same rate of change in the market rate of interest. When the investment is less responsive to the market rate of interest, then the change in the rate of interest has a little effect on the investment, on the change in the investment. And if it is more responsive, if the investment is more responsive to the market rate of interest, then the change in the market rate of interest, market rate of interest has a, has a, has a more effect, has a, um, has a big effect on the change in the investment, okay? responsiveness of the investment to the market rate of in, in uh, market rate of interest matters matters for the slope of the mei for the slope of the MEI. okay so now i am erasing this marking okay now look now look at this curve the shifting of mei curve shifting of mei curve if along the vertical axis measure the MEI or interest rate and along the uh, uh, along the vertical axis along the horizontal axis measure the investment okay along the horizontal axis measure the investment so this is the MEI and it shifts this is the MEI initial MEI and it shifts up why MEI shifts and why it's uh, why there is this different type of slopes why there is a different type of slopes in MEI, we have discussed, but now we are discussing about the shifting of the MEI to upward or to backward. If there is an increase in autonomous investment, if there is an increase in autonomous investment, then there is a, there is, there is a shifting of MEI. Okay, if there is an increase in autonomous investment, because rate of interest does not play, market rate of interest does not play any role for shifting the MEI. Autonomous investment, autonomous investment plays a crucial role for shifting the MEI. If there is an increase, if there is an increase in the autonomous investment, then there is a there is a shifting of MEI to upward. If there is a decrease in autonomous investment, then there is a shifting of MEI, ME1 to the left, to the origin, to the origin, okay, it will shift this towards origin. If there is an increase in total purchasing power of an economy, if there is an increase in total purchasing power of an economy, that is there is an increase in the induced investment. If there is an increase in the induced investment, then also there is a there is a shifting of MEI to upwards. And if again there is a decrease in total purchasing or increase in induced investment, then also the MEI will shift to the origin, will shift toward the origin. So I hope that you have an understanding over this lecture that they, what is the capital, what is investment, and what is autonomous investment, what is induced investment, what is average propensity to invest, what is marginal propensity to invest, what is marginal efficiency of capital, what is marginal efficiency of investment? What is the relation between the marginal efficiency of capital with the marginal efficiency of investment? And why there is a different type of slopes in the marginal efficiency of investment? 
and why there is a shifting in the marginal efficiency of investment. So number of concept I have tried to clarify in this lecture because especially in IAS examination, Indian Civil Service examination and national level examination for college service commission for college service for college service and number of competitive examinations are there where number of questions are set in that examination so i hope if you enjoy this lecture and enrich your knowledge and be successful in your coming coming competitive examinations. Hope you have enjoyed. Thank you. Thank you for watching my video.